Hello, welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage, on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. As a family, our plans changed today. The wife had to work, so I snuck out here in the shop and ended up assembling the internals of my next personal Turbo 400 for my Race 55 Chevy. In yesterday's video, I was talking about this ATI aluminum direct drum kit for a Turbo 400 and part number 407056. A couple things I forgot to mention, I guess, or bring together in my story is while most aluminum direct drums for a Turbo 400 are around $1,000, sometimes you get just the drum. And in the 36 element variety, often you get a set of intermediate clutches to fit the larger sprag race that they use on one type of 36 element sprag. This particular 36 element kit uses stock Turbo 400 or 4L80E sized intermediate clutches. So I think that's an advantage uh, because I have all the parts in stock. My other, my current transmission for the 55 Chevy has a 36 element sprag on the back of the direct drum, but it's a steel drum, and it indeed takes the Ford C6 style clutches, the larger ID clutches, so. Uh, but my point is, you typically get the drum or the drum and a set of clutches for around $1,000. This kit for around $1,000, slightly less, uh, right around $1,000, uh, gives you a center support, and I got a billet piston for the direct drum, and the clutches for the direct drum, clutches and steels, and pressure plate and all that stuff. So you saw all the stuff I showed you, and I, and I mentioned the center support that's been machined with the bushing to support the aluminum drum. It's a lot more comprehensive than just buying a drum. So you can also buy an aluminum drum in 34 element sprag size as well. Again, lots of options. So yesterday, a few other parts also showed up, which spurred me to go ahead and assemble everything you see here. This is ready to go for the most part, and let's just take it one by one. Starting with the pump. Okay, I'll try not to knock it over here. There we go. The pump, I have not put the hose clamp on it and tightened up the bolts because I like to put just the lower part of the pump in, the stator tube end, and set my end play that way without putting the whole pump in. It's just easier. So final assembly, I have the rings on it. I selected my smallest washer uh, sidebar, which I'm not real good at, but I'll go, and I'll go off on a tangent anyway. The current transmission that I have built, I built it for the 72 Nova, twin turbo Nova, I kept it when I sold the car, and now it's going in the Race 55 Chevy. Uh, that transmission I bought, actually, the inside of a complete transmission that was had a roller bearing in every position except on the center support, I believe. I think it has rollers between everything else. It was sold as a low drag unit. I believe it was all ATI. I think it is used, but in perfect shape, so... In this transmission, I'll have a roller forward hub and the roller bearing in the case, and the rest will be just thrust washer. And it'll be a good uh, comparison, you know, if I do run them at the same time, because this will have an aluminum drum, but I don't, you know, necessarily believe the machining for the roller bearings. Uh, it's probably worthwhile. I'm not sure you'll ever see the difference in ET. The jury's still out, but this pump, let's go piece by piece. I have been saving it only because somebody had put an aftermarket stator tube in it. It's pinned and it's otherwise in decent shape and it's been down on my shelf and now I've cleaned it up and assembled it and I don't have the one first or second gear lead valve body yet, but I know it's going to come with probably a 200 pound spring for the pressure regulator. I usually stock the cone spring, the 200 pound, it's 22044, it's like $4. You can buy it all over the internet. I like to have them 
a few on hand so I can just go ahead without the spring. Uh, you know, the pots are going to rattle around, if not fall out. So in this case, it's complete, and this will be an interesting pump to try. Uh, a lot of valve bodies, most valve bodies do come with a pressure regulator spring. They don't explain what the pressure is going to be or why you need it. They just tell you to put it in the pump. Sometimes they just give it to you and don't even tell you to put it in the pump, but you can tell where it goes. So uh, a lot of instructions with trans brake valve bodies are kind of vague. However, the ATI valve body I just put in last week doesn't even come with a pressure rate regulator spring. They mention at different pressures you need different voltages to make the solenoid work. But they assume, again, ATI again, they assume you're building the complete package. You're not just trying to follow the instructions and put it in. The instructions are very minimal. Probably, again, this stuff is more comprehensive than, you know, to the naked eye. And a lot of times you have to fill in the blanks and or try to get the information from them if you're not familiar with whatever operation they didn't provide you enough information with. So... That is my pump, what I'm going to run. Forward drum, it has a, well first off, the drum itself, it just showed up yesterday, which again, why I continued to work, it's an ATI, this is a cute little sleeve it had over it. It has a torsional input shaft, I noted this on the Copo as well, the transmission I fixed a few weeks ago, I added the valve body, uh, transmit valve body to the, the neck down. Here, they're actually torsional, they're made to twist instead of break. So I'm not sure the horsepower rating of this, but it's plenty, more than a stock one. So, you know, 12 to 1800, I'm sure is a piece of cake for it. Again, it's designed to twist right here. And it comes with a lot much larger splines uh, broached into the drum. They use a stock forward drum and that's fine. It was a check ball drum. Yes, it was. And I put a stock non-check ball piston and I happen to have a set of uh, red clutches and the black choline steels. I don't typically run those, but I had a brand new set, six and six. I put six and six in this and a Sonex heavy duty forward hub with the roller baron. So that's all ready to go, six clutch. Uh, the direct drum you saw yesterday, but I did assemble it. It came with everything. I just had to lube up the piston, stick it together. I ended up using the Sonex heavy duty spring retainer. And you can't see it, but I put the gold retainer that ATI gave me for this drum. I put it in the forward and I did finally find a stock uh, spring retainer plate. It's about 43 thousandths thick. This was 65 and I believe the ATI was 60. And uh, so they're both considerably thicker. This one again has the extra little lug to hold the uh, snap ring in. And this has a billet piston. And this, this piston is the only one that sees any stress, you know, releasing the trans brake and whatnot with the giant springs it has. Uh, a stock piston in the forward that just comes on and stays on. And the intermediate again, comes on and stays on as well. So. It's a pretty thick unit. I think it'll be just fine. We spoke yesterday of my four clutch intermediate pack. Uh, I believe I'm gonna have to do some clearance to make this fit, but I have enough pots in stock to make it work. So we're six clutches in the forward, six clutches in the direct, four clutches in the intermediate. And that's the way it is. My lower unit, uh, before I grab that, I put a FTI main shaft. I was going to buy ATI as well, but Summit was out of stock and I was buying from Summit. So they did have an FTI. It's a F4041. It's a 300M uh, alloy intermediate shaft. As strong as any. Uh, again, way overkill for my power level. I'm sure that would hold up to, well, equivalent. You see them advertise, you know, 12 to 1800. Horse, horsepower, again, weight and traction play a factor. So the input shaft 300M ATI, main shaft is 300M FTI. This is the ATI's center support. The lower unit itself, I've been saving as well. 
when I pulled it out of the core, the reaction carrier where the uh, band rides was smoother than I typically would run, but the band itself was also in perfect shape. It's an aftermarket band, OEM style, but it's a lot smoother. So I'm gonna try this. I, I, I'm a fan of the stock band, but this transmission didn't even look new inside, but the insides certainly did. So, so the planetary itself, just a you know helical cut, really nice shape. I added the ATI output shaft. It's a 406 027. It's pretty much a stock replacement. It's 4340 steel. The output shaft on a Turbo 400 is not something that would typically break. This one actually has tiny marks in it where you would cut it for power glide length 400 and different transfer cases. It comes extra long spline. I, the slip yoke goes over all three of these serrations, so I don't think that's like a point where it would break, you know, a fracture point, but again, because the slip yoke is going to cover all three of them, it's not like when you cut an actual shaft in the rear end, you intentionally make a groove in it, wanting it to break there. If it's going to break, I don't think this is the same situation, but if it does, I'll come up with something better. Either put a stock one back in it or uh, buy a 300M output too. So uh, a lot of the output shafts, you know, if you want to spend, this was $130, cheaper than you could buy a used one on eBay, stock turbo 400 output shaft. Uh, I see some 300 M ones for not much more money. So next time I buy one, I think I'll buy the FDI's is a 300 M output shaft. So I'll probably go with that. So my next question or dilemma that I was pondering in my mind, and I'm pretty much made up my mind this afternoon is in most of me wants to spend $2,000 for an ATI super case and bell housing combo the 1990 something dollars online and there's a couple in stock if you shop around so i could get my hands on one which is always a concern and uh i'm not going to the reason being the number one transmission for the uh probably my street transmission because it has a steel 36 element drum uh for the 55 chevy that's all built we'll go on a uh walk about and check it out is a HD case ATI uh, bell housing it has a Tom Waters shield on it but it's identical to a TCI I have more than a dozen heavy-duty cases with the bell housings lopped off you know they're just raw that's the way I buy them and get they get shipped to me that way so I already have plenty of them I'm not probably likely to hurt the case, and I'm going to run a shield on it, which you have to. That's, an SFI case is nice because you don't have to run an external shield. And I'm not sure I even touched on why you want uh, an aluminum direct drum. If you've been following along all the time, you already know. But in a Turbo 400, if you were to lose power and the, the engine shuts off, or you neutral it by accident, or whatever reason or on purpose when you do that in turbo 400 instead of the direct drum being along for the ride it now gets driven through the gear train 2.48 so drive shaft rpm times 2.48 it the drum reaches critical speed especially when they're cast and they explode and come through the floor that's why you have to have a shield on the transmission and that's why an aluminum drum is better because it's less likely to explode if it does it's has less projectiles so back to my point i have another sheet i have another brand new tci shield in a box again i have a tom water shield that's black but the tci is identical pretty much i already have that it's out in the box i have a two ati bell housings identical to what's on there i got plenty of stock hd cases and I have the rest in my valve body. I've already ordered a bunch of valve bodies to restock. So I'll put the one plus two or first and second gear leave ATD automatic transmission design brake in it. It'll be just like my other transmission, literally plug and play. So if there's room for one, there's room for the other. And now I don't have to spend $2,000. Now in the future, 
when they finish the car because what bugs me about buying the SFI case right now is the SFI tag is good for five years and that is relevant if you have to pass tech it you know one of my local tracks is NHRA I want to pass tech I'm very safety conscious but having that date ticking off <laughs> on a piece of metal that's again this thick and not likely to go bad <sighs> kind of gives you a little hot burn because they're expensive two thousand dollars and the thing's ticking away in five years you gotta either have it recertified or whatever so I can always easily hey I build transmissions if I get the car all done and decide I need an SFI case I can swap it out but right now I can put all these pieces into a case that I refurb put all the stuff on it and one if I have somebody that shows up and has to have one today well I'll sell them my transmission I've done that seven or eight times already and now I'll have two of them done so it won't hurt so bad and uh Again, in the future, I can, in a day or so, swap it all over. That's my plan. And who knows? I might come up with better parts. These, I keep improving my own personal transmission, trying not to just go out and spend my way to a, you know, really, transmissions are really spendy. I don't even want to tell you how much they cost, but let's just say more than 10 grand is not out of the realm of possibility. I heard a latest quote, uh, <clears throat> the uh, No Prep Kings guys, you know, when they budget a car, they budget about twenty-five to 30000 for a transmission and converter. So, lock-up, turbo 400. But, again, it's fancier than this. This is middle of the road at best. A super transmission for your average guy. You know, your average guy with, you know, pushing 2,000 horsepower, this will be just fine. Uh, you know, from there, you need to spend more money on internals. It's funny, because they don't all look a whole lot different. If I had a cone... You know, straight cut gear set, it would look a whole lot like this. You know, I could have probably an aluminum center sport if I wanted to run that. You know, but parts kind of look the same. It would have an aluminum forward drum for sure. I'm waiting for the Smart Tech module by Sonics to be kind of proofed out a little bit more. I'd love to have one of those, but they're expensive as well. So, uh, so this is a really nice transmission for, you know, your sportsman guy. Your touring professional needs to spend more money than this. <laughs> Let's go check out my little. It's been a while since we've looked at it. I keep it all covered up down here. I was just looking at the date of, what do we got? July 21. That's when I bought this bell housing. So I knew it was a couple years ago I built it. So pretty much two years ago. But I'll paint the other one gray again it'll have a red shield maybe i'll paint it a different color so i can tell them apart maybe i'll paint it black or i like the stainless steel color that's actually really nice so i have the same pan outside shift to linkage i can reproduce that i can swap over again it'll be any, i have a, a roll of tail i have plenty of those takes the billet yoke do i need two transmissions no but this will give me two ready to go. One with an aluminum drum. And I already built two complete center sections for it. A 410 and a 457. And engines, well, it's going to have, uh, yes, it's going to have LS, a small block, and a big block. <laughs> All right, so that's the action for today. The next time I have an opportunity, tomorrow potentially, I will choose one of the HD cases. I actually have one that has the Speedo area. It's all thick aluminum. It's never been cut out because it was on a Oldsmobile, I believe, that they briefly ran the speedometer off the right front wheel. So they never machined out the case. So the back half of the case is extra rugged because it's all thick. There's not a giant hole cut in it for a speedometer. So uh, perhaps I'll use that case. That case might be a good choice but again i have plenty to choose from so i'm not sure which one i'm going to take the mood will strike me but i'll pick the best one i possibly can and uh throw all this junk inside it it's going to take some prep work it's a whole day of case prep we've gone over it before but by the time it's pretty enough and clean enough to accept all these nice parts it's the next hurdle but again the 
ATI Bellhausen, the new one. I got two of them out in the box, and I got uh, one more BTE aluminum deep pan, I think. So I have everything I need, plenty of parts to put it together. And uh, I don't even argue with myself. I woke up this morning and said, hey, I want to work on my transmission. That's what I do. So this is coming. I'm not going to take it down off the stirrup. I'll use another one to assemble the 400. But I promised I'd clean this bench, and every, a lot of the stuff was already sitting on the bench. So one by one, pots are coming off the bench. So enjoy the rest of your Saturday, and uh, tune in next time where we do more stuff. Take her easy.